Hello guys, I'm back with a new video and today we are going to discuss how bug bounty hunters and pen testers makes mistakes while hunting for access vulnerabilities. So this video is not for beginners. Uh, if you are already watching this video, make sure that you have watched my previous video on access vulnerability. In that video, I have covered the basic of XSS and the approach for finding access vulnerability. I've also covered the web bypass techniques as well. So if you haven't watched that video, pause this video right here, watch that video first and then come back and watch the complete this video. So we will be talking about the common mistakes that bug bounty hunters and uh, pen testers make that usually lead to missing out on XSS vulnerabilities that are already there on the application. So first mistake is filtering your attack surface on the basis of HTTP response status or by looking at the content of the page. So from this, I just want to convey that XSS is not about HTTP response response code. Okay. So this is not about HTTP response status codes. Let's say if you assume that, yeah, I'm good. I'm, I will be looking out for XSS vulnerability. I will be only looking out, out on the page who are giving me 200 okay in the response. So you're wrong. It is not about the response status. It is about the HTML content. Whatever page loads the HTML content. And if you are able to make your malicious payload part of that HTML content, then XSS can be present over there. It doesn't matter if it's 200 okay or 404 or whatever. So the point is, do never judge your target that if uh, the target is loading a 404 page, then XSS cannot be there. It, it can be there. Okay. You can never be judgmental on the basis of the uh, response status code. Okay. So here you can see the example, uh, this side, if you can see, um, initially when I found this page on census through census, uh, I found this IP actually, and, uh, that, that was running, running a web service. And I saw the status code was 400, bad request. So I appended a parameter called shop equal to, and when I inserted a payload, it gave me pop-up, right? So do never judge a target on the basis of the response code that it is giving. The objective that you have to keep in your mind is to make sure that you check the HTML page properly. You are able to find out all the HTML content that the site is loading and the target should be injecting your malicious payload into the application so that it becomes a part of that HTML page. Okay. In this one, in this example, you can see that the data is getting reflected back in a non, not very HTML kind of format, right? It looks more like JSON data, right? But still you can see if I injected the payload into the URL parameter and it got reflected back, right? So the page might look like, you know, returning data in JSON kind of format, but it can not be very compulsory that it might not be executing HTML. This page is executing HTML, which is why the payload got executed. Second, uh, this is a very important one. The second mistake that uh, most of the bug bounty hunters and pen testers make is directly starting the injection of payload without spending time to understand the flow of HTML elements in different scenarios. For example, if you are visiting a website, then you should know that how the different elements of HTML or how the different DOM elements are loading in the website instead of just directly looking out for the access vul vulnerability from the very beginning. You just spend some time understanding the application. What are the features? What are the different DOM elements which are loading? I'll explain this with an example. Uh, let's assume that you have a website site.com and you have an ID parameter, which whose value is set, set to a numerical identifier one, two, three, and there is a URL parameter and it is loading a 200. Okay. Page. Now, there is one more parameter. If you add that parameter load equal to one, then it is also loading 200. Okay. But it is also loading some additional HTML elements. Like it can be some pop-up or it can be some box. It can be anything. It, it is loading some more HTML content when you are adding an extra parameter like that. So you might have observed that in many sites that if you, the parameters can control the HTML content of the page. Now third scenario, uh, 
like uh, for example if you just in that particular url if you temper the value like if you just replace the value 1 2 3 from abc then the website might give you a 404 page why because might be the parameter might be accept, accepting only the numerical values it might give you a 404 page because it might not be able to find the resource related to uh, abc uh, okay so it might give you a 404 page and uh, if you enter 1 2 3 in the id parameter and in the url if you add, enter a, an invalid url let's say abccc so that's not a url right so it is it will be also loading a 404 page right let's assume it is also loading a 404 page but it's possible it might load a different kind of 404 page with some additional element possible right so you never know the point is you have to make sure that you check the reflection in all the permutations and combinations. For example, this parameter, this one, two, three parameter, if it is vulnerable to XSS vulnerability, okay, I'm injecting the payload here and seeing the response. It is not getting reflected. It is not executing. Why? Because it might be possible that it is not vulnerable on the 200 OK page, but it is vulnerable on the 400 page. So for that, I have to, I have to enter a faulty value in the URL parameter so that this and this thing both work together. My this payload goes to the 404 page and this value creates the 404 page for that particular input. So you have to try all the permutation and combination. If you want to check for XSS vulnerability on this ID parameter, you have to check on this page. You have to check on this page. You have to check on this page and this page. I hope it makes sense. So understand the dome first, try to play with the parameters a little bit and try to load all the HTML elements that you are able to see how what kind of uh, manipulation is leading to what kind of uh, you know uh, dome changes or what kind of pages are loading uh, what with what kind of uh, you know actions let's understand with some example i might not be able to uh, you know explain it properly but let's just uh, you know understand it with some examples right uh, if you didn't understand from from the explanation on on the previous slide I, I hope these examples will make some sense to you. For example, here in the first screenshot, you can see the T parameter is injected with the script tag, script payload, the basic access payload, and it is giving link expired, right? Which means the T parameter is expecting some value, right? Uh, if I inject a non URL value in the T parameter, it won't be accepting it. It is expecting a specific value in the T parameter followed by anything, right? So if I enter a URL first, if you can see in the second screen screenshot, if I in the same URL, in the same URL, in the same parameter on the same site, if I enter a URL first, and then after that, I enter the payload and hit, then it gives me a, a, an access pop up. Why? Because the value if you inject of an invalid value over here it is going to load different content and if you are going to enter a valid value over here it is going to load a different content right so you have to understand that what are the possible uh, pages what are the number of pages or what are the what are all the possible pages or elements that are being loaded uh, by the website when you are when you are tempering the parameter when you are making changes in the parameter you have to map this thing in your head that yeah if i if i enter this value in this parameter the application is supposed to load this if i enter this value then it is going to load this and you have you should have a map of all the parameters and and you you should map all the parameters with the html elements so that you will be able to you will be able to find out that what parameter has to be uh, tempered on what page and where the reflection will be okay uh, so I think this makes sense uh, let's just talk about one more example let's say uh, there is a site uh, so this is an example um, that this is a vulnerability that I found on a 
on a bug bounty target there is a, there are search fields okay so i entered a very basic payload in the search field okay svg overload equal to alert and then this reflex so that was my pseudonym before shunya <laughs> so yeah so i entered this payload and i hit enter if you can see in the first screenshot it is not giving me a pop up right but in the second screenshot you can clearly see a pop up so what is the reason i mean you can if you look at the url there is nothing no no difference in the urls right so in the first one it is not giving me a pop up but in the second one it is giving me a pop up the reason is on this web application i observed that if i enter if i make search twice right then it will be loading an html element that you can see over here right it will be loading this box over here like this and on that box the sanitization was not was not proper hence in order to exploit this excesses i had to load this url twice so that that box can come up and there the sanitization won't be proper here if you can see the uh, user supplied input is getting sanitized properly over here but not here it was also reflecting over here as well on this box html element okay so you have to map you have to see how the input is flowing through the dome and you have to understand how you can make maximum you how you can make the application return maximum html content because the more you are able to see the more html you are able to see the more you or more will be the chances that you will be able to find out many as many client injection as possible okay so third one is ignoring additional attack surface for example if an application is there and it is using some chatbot you might not be hunting off for access vulnerability on those chatbots right so that that chat box is also uh, an attack surface for you if you can inject some payload over there and it will be stored in the chat right so it will be leading to mostly stored stored accesses yeah it will be stored access because message message get uh, saved in the chat so you, here you can see i injected this payload in the chat and once you click here you move your mouse over here it will be giving you a pop up so do not never miss this kind of uh, additional attack surfaces one more attack surface that that i can tell you about is um, when you try to log in on a website um, and you make some uh, invalid login attempt against a user account right so some application provide a feature that they will be sending email to the legit account owner that this guy is trying to log in into your account from this user agent and this ip right so while making the uh, login attempt to the victim user account you can inject payload in the user agent header or x forwarded for header right you can inject client side injection payload like html injection or iframe injection payload over there and then the application mechanism is going to notify the user through an email that this there was a login attempt on your application from this ip and, and this user agent so if the sanitization is not properly done by the application then the html injection payload or iframe injection payload will be executing in the email template so that is also an attack surface you have to think about all the potential uh, you know um, injection point and reflection points third one completely relying on browser for testing stored accesses stored html injection or any other stored client client side injection so this is the mistake number 4 that most of the bug bounty hunters and uh, pen testers are making sometimes the application perform client side modification in a user input right for example if you inject something in on the client side that let's say there is a comment page you enter 1111 and then you enter single quote double quote greater than or less than along with it and you 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 know post that comment then uh, the application is supposed to sanitize the input in the response right but sometimes the clients client side on the client side also when you send the input in the request you can see the sanitization right so there is also client side sanitization that some some application do follow this and they only rely on the client side sanitization which is risky so 
in order to you know uh, find this kind of vulnerabilities or in order to find this kind of misconfigurations that leads to excesses you have to keep a habit of always checking the payloads in the burp when you are hunting for stored excesses vulnerability you should always let the traffic pass through burp right not don't do never rely on the browser while you are specifically hunting for stored excesses vulnerability because i'll i'll tell you i'll show you the screenshot and then you will be able to understand better and yeah and this scenario is only applicable to the um to the stored excesses because in reflected excesses if you are um if you want if you are using burp suit right you cannot use burp suit as a man in the middle right because in in reflected excesses you have to deliver the payload to someone right in stored excesses the payload is getting stored right so you can utilize burp suit the way you want to right but in reflected excesses you cannot uh, use burp suit for exploitation right you have to deliver the link to someone you cannot deliver the link via burp suit it, it won't be going through the burp suit in a real world scenario right you'll understand better when i show you the example here if you see this is a chat box i type the html injection payload over here right and if you, you and i intercept the request if, if you see the request properly you can see the content parameter is taking the data okay in the key value pair in the json format it is taking the value to the server this is the request this is the body part if you can see the my payload is getting encoded in html encoding on in the request itself you can see here right in the request itself it is getting encoded but it makes no sense of encoding a payload on the client side right because you have to you have to deliver that you have to on the client side the payload can be modified right so instead of you know just uh, sending the payload directly via via chat or via browser you can simply intercept the request you can modify the payload on the burp and then you can send it right and we are doing this for the stored client side injection vulnerabilities which means stored accesses stored html injection stored iframe injection right so the payload once gone to the server it will be stored over there right you can see it over here i send 1111 like this and you can see the i intercept the request i replace 1111 with the payload like this okay so this is payload without uh, encoding this is the payload in the plain text this one i injected it over here i forward the request and you can see there is a there is a button lo uh, it loads a button click here when i click on that click here button it loads the evil.com website in the chat box here you can see this is the evil.com website loaded in a chat box so this scenario doesn't work in the um, reflected accesses because if just think uh, properly if you there is no sense of you know um, uh, intercepting a request modifying a payload uh, you know man in the being man in the middle and modifying the payload and send then send it because in reflected scenarios you won't be able to you know be the man in the middle right you are already man in the middle then what is the point of doing excesses anyways uh, so this scenario uh, works in the applications where the application is vulnerable to stored excesses where the data that you are sending it remains persistent right for example if this payload is getting sent okay as a chat message and it will remain over there right once i send it over there it will remain over there right but it won't be the same case in the reflected scenarios right so that's all for today uh, thank you so much for your time uh, please don't forget to like share and subscribe uh, and i'll see you soon thank you